And so we come to the Greek of Acts 20, 17 through 24. Paul is at Miletus, uh, which is south of Ephesus. Uh, he, of course, in Acts 19, Acts 19 ends with the riot at Ephesus, and Paul leaves town, goes around Macedonia to Corinth, back around Macedonia, and, and then as he comes back through, picks up the author of Luke Acts at Philippi, let's call him Luke, and, and uh, they sail down the, the, the western coast of Asia Minor uh, until they, pa they pass Ephesus and come to Miletus. They pass Ephesus uh, perhaps, uh, well, Paul says because he's in a hurry to get to Jerusalem by the day of Pentecost. There may be other reasons too. Probably isn't safe to him there. Perhaps he was told to leave the city and not come back. All kinds of things that could have, could be playing into that. Uh, we only get maybe one little sliver of, of the story from Acts, possibly, maybe not. Maybe it's just fanciful thinking. And so he's at Miletus, and let's begin with verse 17. And from Miletus, having sent to Ephesus, uh, he, he called for the elders of the church. Okay, so um, the, the main verb here is he called, metakaleo. You can see the sigma alpha, which tells me aorist, right? Uh, middle ending, amen, ooh, et Okay, so that's middle, so it's aorist, middle, indicative, because it has a short connecting vowel. Third person singular, because that's, that's what it is, from metakaleo. So he invited, he called for, um, called to come together uh, with him, the elders. Elders is masculine, although it would be masculine if there were any men there at all. That doesn't mean that they were all masculine. The masculine, like Spanish and other languages, would be used even if there was a substantial number of women. Uh, so this doesn't imply that the elders of Ephesus were all men. For example, uh, Priscilla could be one of them, uh, or Junia could, could be one of them. Uh, again, I talk a little bit about a Roman 16 hypothesis that I'm not, I'm not going to say it's so because we don't have enough evidence, uh, but a theory that Roman 16 may have been sent to uh, Ephesus rather than to Rome. But anyway, who knows? Uh, having sent is a participle. Up C is the key to hidden sigma. So we have a hidden sigma alpha, which is what tense? Aorist, that's right. So this is an aorist active participle. Nominative masculine singular, it's sassy. Um, um, okay. Um, so um, nominative masculine singular, aorist active participle, having sent. Okay. Uh, the elders of the church, interesting church here used in the singular, although there were probably churches, many house churches at Ephesus, uh, because you can't get a lot of people in a singular, in a, in a single house church, right? Verse 18. And as he, as, as they arrived to him, he said to them, uh, so this is a kind of a circumstantial clause. Uh, he spoke to them as they arrived, uh, aping and Aorist, aping and aorist, aorist active indicative. N is a third person singular past tense ending, active indicative. Uh, okay, this here, gen, is paraginami. Uh, the gen tells me it's not present uh, stem here, so it must be aorist. Um, aorist, and then the ending, amenuita, ametha, esthe, anta, third person plural middle ending, aorist middle. Of course, Paragin, oh my, is deponent. Um, okay, they arrived to him. Direct discourse, capital letter, that's an upsilon. Quote, you, you guys, not necessary because you is in the ending, right? So it's a little bit of emphasis. You guys, you know, uh, epistasta. Uh, this is from uh, episteme. Not quite all the letters there. Uh, so I'm thinking that this is probably uh, aorist, uh, probably aorist, uh, active and dick, or no, it's present, isn't it? You know, uh, instead of you have known. Yeah, episteme, episteme. Yeah, so let's go with, uh, let's go with present active, or present middle uh, indicative second plural. Uh, you guys know from the first day from which I arrived in Asia, how with you the whole time I have been. Okay, uh, so uh, this is epibino, I arrive, I, I go upon, I arrive. Uh, it doesn't have all the letters of bino, so it must be a second aorist. Uh, aorist, active indicative, 
uh, third, uh, first person singular, right? I, I arrived. Uh, how with you the whole time, the all time, I have, I became. So this is again, again, oh my, it's deponent, but it's aorist because it's gen instead of gin. Uh, that makes this an aorist middle indicative, indicative because the connecting vowel isn't fried. And that's a first person singular ending. Uh, I have been, I came to be. Uh, verse 19, um, serving the Lord with all humility and tears and testings of the things that occurred to me uh, by the plots of the Jews. Okay, this is a present active participle, serving the Lord. Serving verbs tend to take a dative object. Serving the Lord with all humility and tears and testings of the things that happened to me. So this is, a, my aunt is an active participle. Uh, it's sumbino, so it's an aorist uh, active participle, uh, genitive masculine plural, or probably neuter, neuter plural uh, genitive, of the things that took place uh, to me uh, in the plots of the Jews. Not just Jews. In fact, uh, we hear a whole lot more about plots from non-Jews than we do Jews, but this is one of the tendencies of Acts to, to highlight the Jewish opposition to Paul over and against the Gentile opposition to Paul. Verse 20. Um, how nothing uh, I shrunk back of the of the things beneficial. Um, uh, so this is uh, apostello. Uh, there's only one lambda and internal lengthening here, so it's aorist. And there's this the alpha to tell me it's aorist. So it's just an aorist middle ending, uh, aorist middle indicative first singular from apostello. Uh, how nothing I shrank of the things benefiting. Uh, so uh, this is a very common, I think, philosophical term, the things that are beneficial. My aunt is an active participle, sum fero, present, uh, all the letters are there, so it's a present active participle, genitive, neuter, plural, again, I think, of the things beneficial, in order to not announce them to you. So we have a genitive article with an infinitive, which is a purpose or result construction uh, in order to not announce them to you. Double negative here, but Greek does that a lot. Um, in English, we probably will leave the not out. Uh, I have not shrunk from, um, from announcing to you anything that was beneficial to you and to teach you publicly uh, and uh, according to the houses from house to house. Um, this is Eris, by the way, Anang, Anangeli. Uh, it's Anangelo. It's lost one of its lambdas and it has internal lengthening. So it is, it is an aorist of a liquid verb, which means it doesn't do sigmas, but, but we still have the I that tells you it's an infinitive. Okay, verse 21. Witnessing both to Jews and to Greeks the repentance towards God and faith into the Lord of us, Jesus. Uh, present participle there. Uh, dia martu uh, reomai, I think. I think it's deponent. Uh, that would explain why men are passive or middle participles. So it's a present um, middle or passive deponent participle. Um, and then nominative masculine singular ending. <clears throat> Witnessing both to Jews and to Greeks, the repentance towards God and the faith. These are the things that we do by the power of the Holy Spirit in order to lead to the Holy Spirit coming, which is where, what actually does it. That's the actual, in, the actual instrumentation of coming to Christ is the Holy Spirit. But there are these preparatory things, repentance and faith, that are also empowered by the Holy Spirit, we would believe theologically. Verse 22, and now behold, I have been bound in spirit. Paraphrastic, uh, actually it's not a paraphrastic because I don't have the, the, um, the, to, the to be verb part of it. Um, or, and now behold, having been bound in spirit, I, okay, sorry, let's put it all together. And now, behold, I, having been bound in spirit, am going to Jerusalem. There we go. So this is not a paraphrastic. It is a perfect participle. You can tell it's perfect because it's uh, got a little beside itself there. I put an epsilon in the middle. The end, it's deo. Uh, deo, it's um, to bind. The ending is shoved right on the stem, which happens in the perfect middle or passive. So this is a perfect uh, passive participle, nominative masculine singular, having, because it's perfect, 
bin because it's passive, bound because it's deo. Okay, I, having been bound in spirit, am going to Jerusalem. Peru am I, that's a present deponent indicative, first singular. Um, uh, am I, oh my, it's deponent. Okay, um, not knowing, uh, this is the participle of uh, horao, um, it is a perfect participle, not and it, perfect with active meaning. I think you know the oida thing. Actually, it's oida, not horao. Although it's related, those are related. Um, not knowing, perfect. So it's perfect in form, present in meaning. I'm going not knowing the things in it that is in Jerusalem, um, uh, going to meet me. And now a treat, you Greek people, a treat. This is a participle. My aunt is an active participle, right? So I know it's an active participle. There's a neuter plural alpha, bingo. That's what I tell my students to say whenever they see a neuter plural alpha. It's silly, but it works. So it's neuter plural um, accusative. So I know it's an active participle, accusative, neuter plural, from soon on tao. So what tense is it? It has a sigma added. It's a future participle. We have not seen, I don't think, we have not seen a future participle in the whole book of Acts. They aren't very common, um, not very common at all, but here we have one. So put that in your, in your uh, collector's book, your stamp book. Um, we have a future active participle, accusative, neuter, plural, from sunan tao. Uh, not, I'm going to Jerusalem not knowing uh, the things that will, that will, that are going, going to meet me there. Um, going to, per, per, a future participle. Okay, part of the foreshadowing begins. Um, however, or accept that, the Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, according to city, the Holy Spirit in every city uh, is witnessing to me, uh, present, uh, passive, um, I said dia martu re oh my, didn't I, in that last time, um, is witnessing. Yeah, it's, that's okay. Let's go with deponent again. Present, deponent, indicative, third singular. The Spirit is witnessing to me in every city, saying, um, this is neuter, that's a present active participle, neuter nominative singular, because the word for spirit is neuter. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit's neuter, it just means that it's grammatically neuter. Saying that bonds and tribulations remain for me. Uh, they are they are awaiting me. Uh, present active indicative, third plural. Verse 24. But of no account, of no account I make my life um, a worth. I, make my, I consider my life to be worth squat uh, to myself um, as to complete the course of me and the ministry uh, that I received from the Lord Jesus. Uh, to witness the gospel of the grace of God. Uh, and so, um, no matter, even if I die at the end of all this, this is foreshadowing, right? Um, I think Acts, for the rest of the book, will foreshadow that Paul dies at the end of the book. I think that's what the, the tone is. You can hear the Jaws music, as I said in the podcast. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, to complete, this is Eris because of the Sigma Alpha. It's an infinitive, Eris, active infinitive of teleao, to perfect or to complete. Of no account I make my life as, um, this is a middle, by the way, present middle indicative, first singular, um, as to perfect my course and my ministry, relative clause, the ministry that I received, lobbying you in Eris uh, from the Lord Jesus, uh, to witness, what is that ministry? The ministry to witness to the gospel. Uh, this is an infinitive. It is a deponent, a uh, present deponent, uh, infinitive from dia martu um, the gospel of the grace of the Lord. And there you have it. So we are now uh, up to verse 24 in Acts chapter 20.